Right out then. Well today I'm going to be doing something that as far as I can tell other Linux YouTubers that own a Pine phone haven't. Today I'm going to be talking about how I use my daily driver Pine phone. Because yes, this Pine phone is actually my daily phone. I use it for like all of my phone stuff and all that sort of thing. And it works pretty well actually. So what I'm going to do in today's video is go through the stuff that I use and talk about how well it works. Now obviously as a result of that, and as a result of this being my daily phone with all my stuff on it, there is going to be some stuff that I can't show you, but generally speaking I'm going to be able to tell you how well everything works. Now, the first thing to know is that I actually use Mobian on here, which is basically Debian for the Pine phone. Now, the reason that I use it is because as far as I can tell it's the only distribution where everything works. Other distributions seem to have some minor issues here and there, I think, generally speaking, Manjaro works quite well as well, but I had some issues with, like, you know, sound devices and stuff on there, so sadly I couldn't use that. But I'm sure they'll fix it eventually. Now, at some point when it's more well-developed, I want to switch to Ubuntu Touch or another more mobile-optimized operating system. But for now, I'm just using Mopia. As you can see here as well, I'm using the Fosh desktop. It's a pretty nice desktop and I can't wait to see where it goes, but there's a few things that I do wish it had, but I'm sure in time it will get more and more features. Now, as you can see, I've got my app list up, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is go through all these apps and tell you how well they work and how I install them and that sort of thing. So from the top, we've got the phone app. Now, phone calls seem to work reasonably well on the Pine phone. The only trouble is the call quality isn't great. Call quality isn't particularly good on my end, and I've had complaints from people on the other end that say the call quality is just not that great. However, calls do work, and you can indeed be heard on the other end, which is the main thing. Now, I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, uh, do calls work, like do outgoing calls work, and do incoming calls work? Well, a few weeks ago when I tried to daily drive with a Pine phone, calls did not work properly. The phone wouldn't wake up when I was receiving a call, and sometimes I couldn't even place a call. And now I'm pleased to say that, generally speaking, the phone does wake when I'm receiving calls, and I can send calls. In fact, I don't actually think I've had an issue that I'm aware of where the phone hasn't received a call, so that's absolutely fantastic to see. Next up, we've got the texting app. Texts do work on here. Now, this is where things get a little bit trickier, because actually texts are a little bit iffy. Um, you will, generally speaking, receive them, and I've not had an issue where I haven't received or sent a text properly. The only issue is that sometimes you won't be notified, which is quite bizarre. I don't actually know what the exact cause of why I sometimes don't receive texts is, but it seems to be that when I open up the app every reboot, something kind of clicks and I will then receive text just fine. So I'm not really sure what that's about, but I'm sure it's probably quite an easy fix, and at some point texting will be 100% reliable. Next up, I've got the Firefox web browser, which this might take a second to launch. Now, one thing to know about the Pine phone is it's not a speed demon by any means, and things do take a little bit of time to launch and stuff. As you can see, Firefox took a second to load here, but now we're up, you can see that scrolling is perfectly smooth. Um, you know, I can go into the menus just fine. Uh, and as you can see, it is full desktop Firefox running on a phone, and it's surprisingly usable, actually. I think it's the ESR version of Firefox, which is the extended support release, um, which I think is a little bit lighter than the current release, which is good for a low-power device like this. And as you can see, I actually have my ad blocker installed, which works perfectly fine, too. The only thing is, since this version of Firefox is configured to use the mobile version of sites, I tend to find that a lot of extensions and stuff I just can't install, which is a little bit frustrating. But like, as a whole, it works completely fine, and if you have an extension that's in the Debian repositories, you can install it with no issue, which is, I think, how I got that app locker installed. So if you keep going, we've got a Contacts app, which I was able to sync up my contacts from Nextcloud absolutely fine which, fantastic. Now I did actually a while ago have issues where the contacts weren't showing in the text and phone app, but that issue seems to have been resolved, which, fantastic. The only thing that annoys me is there's no way yet to import a file into the contacts app. You have to sync it from an online account, which is quite annoying because not everyone's gonna have that. But like, as a whole, it's fine, I guess. 
Next up we have 2048, which is a simple game, which I'm just going to open up to quickly show you. As you can see, it works totally fine. There are a few simple games that work on the Pine Phone. There's like nothing too elaborate, but it works fine. Next up we've got Anki, which is a flashcard program. If I open it up real quick, you'll see that it's a desktop app that actually works really, really well on the Pine Phone. Now that might take a second to launch, so let's just give it a moment. There we go. As you can see, this is a full desktop app that works absolutely fine on the Pine Phone. Now I don't actually have any decks to show you because I'm not yet signed in. But as a whole, it works perfectly fine. And I actually was using it a while ago before I reinstalled my OS and forgot to sign in. Next up we've got Audacious, which is a music player. I decided that I wanted a more traditional music player on the Pine Phone, so I could use a full desktop one. And this works absolutely fine, and I've used it in the past to play music, and it worked fantastically. So if you keep scrolling, we've got an Authenticate, which I don't use. Blanket, which is an app that's supposed to play ambient noises. I haven't used it yet, but I believe it works perfectly fine. We've got GNOME Books, which frustratingly doesn't actually scale properly to the Pine Phone. So if we open it up, you can see that a lot of stuff is just cut off, which is something that you will unfortunately see a fair bit of with the Pine Phone at the moment while apps get updated. You've got a calculator that works totally fine. You've got a calendar which, as far as I can tell, doesn't really work at the moment. As you can see, everything is too small to be usable, but, you know, I suppose you could use it. Next up, you've got Corebird, which is a Twitter client, which works perfectly. So if I'm just going to open it up, there you go. You can see that that works absolutely fine. And you can see that all of my Twitter feed loads. It's a little bit slow, but like as a whole, it's fine. So if we keep going, you can see that we've got a chess program. Works fine, it's chess. You've got clocks. Now, this is a little bit iffy. Now, generally speaking, alarms will go off, and I've had very few instances where they don't, but every so often they won't, and i found that timers and stuff like that just do not work, which is unfortunate. I'm not actually sure what the issue is, but I'm sure at some point it's going to be sorted. Next up, you've got Dialect, which is a translation app. You've got Dino, which is an XMPP client. So if we just go ahead and launch it, you can see that it's not... It's perhaps not... Uh, properly scaled to the Pine Phone. Everything is a little bit small, but you could totally use this to send messages, and in fact, I actually have used this to send messages. The only problem with these messaging apps that I find is that um, very often, they need to actually be open in order for you to get messages since they're not mobile optimized. And that's the case for pretty much every app besides your calling and your texting app. And as you can see, we've got a notification up there. Notifications do work, but once again, as I said, the app most often has to be open. You've got GNOME Disk, which works fine. You've got a document viewer, which I'm not needed to use that yet, but to my knowledge, it works fine. Uh, if we keep going, you've got a drawing program, which works absolutely fine. Um, you've got Feed Reader, which is the um, RSS reader I use on my desktop that doesn't work so well. You've got uh, Feeds, which actually scales properly to the Pine Phone, but if you've got a lot of feeds like I do, it's quite slow. So I'm just going to leave that to open, and there you go. So as you can see, it's taking quite some time to load our feeds. And when it actually does load our feeds, it's just slow, it's not scrolling. I've used this to read the news, but you probably wouldn't really want to in its current state, unless you have like very few sources, which might make it faster, maybe. So I'm just going to have to close out of that. And as you can see, sometimes apps don't really close properly, but there you go. If we keep going, we have a file manager, which is, I believe, Nautilus. Now, the reason I installed that is because I want to be able to access my files and stuff, and I also want to be able to access my Nextcloud and stuff, and it's the only file manager which will support that. You've got a flashlight, which actually does work, and if I turn it on, you can probably see that the edge of the case is glowing. The flashlight works perfectly fine. If we keep going, we've got Fractal, which is a matrix client. Now, I've heard from a lot of people that this supposedly does work, but when I like try to log in, it doesn't seem to work, it doesn't show my chats or anything like that, which is a shame because I actually quite like using Matrix. We've got Geary, which is an email client. That works perfectly and scales really well to the Pine Phone. You can use the Pine Phone to read your email just fine. You've got Giara, which is a Reddit client. 
It does work, it scales properly to the Pine phone, but it has the same issue as feeds in that it's quite slow. I'm sure at some point that's going to be improved upon though. You've got GNOTE, which is a note-taking app. As far as I'm aware, it does work. For some reason you can't actually access the notes. I'm not sure if there's some way of doing that. You actually have to bring up the keyboard and hit enter on it, which is a little bit annoying, but I'm sure if you wanted to take some basic notes, that would work absolutely fine. You've got Cheap Podder, which effectively what this is, is it's a full desktop podcast client, which works really, really well on the Pine phone. I actually have used this out and about. I've downloaded my podcast through this and then I've used MPV to play it back, both of which work perfectly fine. Although as you can see, it does take a second to launch, so we're gonna give that a moment to launch. You've got the help app, which I have needed. You've got an image viewer, which works pretty well. Now, something that annoys me is there's no gallery app for the Pine phone yet. You have to manually go into the directory where the photo is saved to look at it, which isn't a deal breaker, but at some point in the future, I would hope that the Pine phone does get a gallery app. And as you can see, we've now got Gpodder open and working completely fine. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but you could absolutely use this to listen to your podcast. If we keep going, you've got King's Cross, which is a terminal client, works perfectly fine. Let's just open it up and I can show you that yes, in fact, you have a full terminal. You can use this to update, uh, install packages, that sort of thing. And that's exactly what I use it for. You've got Comiku, which is a manga reader. Now, I've used this a few times and it works perfectly fine. And I would definitely like to use more of it. You've got Critter, which is actually a full image editor. And believe it or not, it actually works relatively well on the Pine phone. It'll probably take a second to launch, so we should keep looking at the apps while it does that. But it is cool and I should definitely show you that. I've got the full LibreOffice suite because I think it was a dependency for some other program for some strange reason. As far as I can tell, it actually does work, which is pretty neat, but I think you would probably want to use this more when you dock your Pine phone and connect it to a monitor. You've got Lollipop, which is a music player, and I've got to say, this music player works really well. It's completely mobile optimized, as you can see. So let's just go ahead and click on an album and we can scroll through it. And as you can see, this is a music player that works perfectly fine. You can play music through here, but I'm obviously not gonna do that because then I'm gonna get a copyright strike. And as you can see, we've got Critter now open. So let's make a new image. Let's just go ahead and hit enter on that. And as you can see in a second, it will load up our canvas. And what you can actually do within Critter is if we go into view, you can actually detach the canvas and then you've got a perfectly usable canvas and you can actually do some basic image editing on the Pine phone. So let's just go ahead and close out of that and keep going. You can see that we have maps. Now, frustratingly, the GPS does not yet work on Mobian and that's probably the one thing that doesn't work, which is a shame, but no big deal, I guess. We next have Megapixels, which is the Pine phone's camera app. It takes a second to warm up, so you can't really use this to quickly take a photo of something. But as a whole, it does work fine. So if we switch the camera back up and then down again, and as you can see, the Pine phone camera works totally fine. So let's keep going. And as you can see, next up we have Minesweeper, which is a simple Minesweeper game, works totally fine. And if we keep going, we have Mirage, which is a matrix client. I haven't been able to get that working either. We've got Mousepad, which is a text editor. I actually needed to install that because for some reason installing the dark theme broke the other text editor, which I'm not sure what that's about, but it happens on desktop Linux too. MPV, that works totally fine and you can use the Pine phone to play videos. Notorious is a better notes editing app than Gnote, you can use either. Next up we have Podcast, which is a more mobile optimized podcast client. It reminds me a little bit of Lollipop in the way that it works, which makes sense because it's another GNOME app. And as you can see, let's just tap on a podcast and you can play pretty much whatever you want and it will play them in the app and it has a great UI. If we keep going, you've got Portfolio, which is a mobile optimized file manager. It works great, but there's a few features that are still missing for me, which is a shame. If we keep going, you've got Pure Maps, which is another Maps app. It's pretty much the same as GNOME Maps, but 
once again GPS doesn't work so there's no point really. Uh, Shortwave which is a radio client works fantastic but I don't really have any need for it but I have it here anyway because it's an example of an app that works well. You've got the software center which I don't tend to use I just want to use a terminal to install everything because it's easier but it does work absolutely fine if that's what you want. Next up we have a sound recorder I haven't needed it at the moment and I'm sure if I did need it it would work absolutely fine. If we keep going you have the Telegram app, which actually Telegram works really, really well on mobile. Once again, it's one of those things that I sadly can't show you, but it does work and it works well. You've got Termit, which is a terminal client, which I actually haven't tried yet. I assume it would work fine. I think it was a dependency of another program. If we open up this text editor, you can see that it does work and it sizes properly but it doesn't play nice with dark themes, and at the moment I haven't actually found a way to change that to get it to work. So let's just close out of that without saving. If we keep going, you've got a to-do list, which also works properly and is quite mobile optimized. As you can see, you could make a to-do thing and it would work absolutely fine. So it's fantastic to see that we've got a to-do list app that works on the Pine phone. Next up, we've got Tootle, which is a Mastodon client. Now I am a big Mastodon user, so I am happy to see that this app works perfectly fine. We can scroll through my timeline just fine. Um, the only two bugs I found is you can't full screen images. It'll just crash the app. And if you like something, the person on the other end will actually be bombarded with likes. I don't know, that's a strange bug. But like, as a whole, this is a usable Mastodon client and it's actually really, really nice. Transmission is a torrent app. It's actually a desktop program. It's quite simple, so it works perfectly fine on the Pine phone. You can see everything's a little bit small, but I have used this to torrent a few odds and ends and it works totally fine. So if we keep going, you got a usage app, which this is, well, it pretty much is what you'd expect. If an app locks up, you can actually force kill it from in here, which I have had to do a few times, unfortunately. If we keep going, we've got the GNOME video apps. I don't actually use that. I would much rather just use MPV. We've got a weather app. I also don't tend to use that, but I assume it would work fine. And finally, we've got GNOME web, which this is fine, it scales properly to the Pine phone, but the only issue that I have is that it's actually very, very slow. So if we go over to DuckDuckGo real quick, so let's go duck, uh, duck, duck, go, and why not, let's just use that. And as you can see, it's taking quite some time to load. And once it actually does load, if it'll load, you can see already that it's much slower than Firefox. And if we just go ahead and try to scroll, as you can see, that's just, that's awful. And it's very slow. Now I assume that's probably because hardware acceleration isn't working, but I imagine once someone does get that working and improves the performance here, it's going to be a fantastic web browser. So all in all, that's my daily driver Pine phone. Now would I recommend that you go out and use one of these as your daily driver phone? Probably not, but if you're a Linux nerd like me and you're really hardcore, you could absolutely use this as your daily phone. But with that said, that's it for today's video. I thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.